and welcome back. So it's been only like for me in real time, a few minutes since the end of the last episode, basically long enough to dump the SD cards and uh, let's get back to it. While I was dumping the SD cards, I had to, well, I'll just, I'll get the GoPro going and I'll tell you what I did while I show you. So while I was dumping SD cards, I drilled the holes out. The top board already had holes, so I just clamped them. I didn't clamp them. I just held them and drilled and dropped the bolts in until I got all four of them in. But now the problem is, is these are wedged together. So I need to bang these apart, slide it onto the push bit, bow pit, bow sprit, bow sprit, and then clamp these up to grab onto the, uh, onto the, um, I just said it, the bow sprit. Grab onto the bow sprit like a, bow sprit like a sandwich and lock it on. Also, I don't know where my little hat went, so I'm going to be probably wearing my big hat or actually mm, the place I took sailing lessons from gave me a hat so free marketing for r and sales or r and r whatever that says <laughs> they are very nice people if i was staying down there i would have kept going to them all right let's get to it oh no that's that's doing that the wrong way All right, let's see if we can put this up on the bow. Woot, it fits. That'll be me soon enough. Actually, that should have been me. I traded spots with them, so I had more time to set up this morning. That's uh, Tatiana, a Tatiana 35, I think they said, or 37, something like that. Yep, that's scoop -a, scook em. I could set that up, but I think I'm going to leave it down until I get over there and I'll set it all up at the same time. So I think I am done for now. I'll bring you back when we're ready to head over. Be a while before the pole goes back in. So I'm about to get the mask pulled, but the folks here are not so keen on camera, which I absolutely understand and respect. So. I'm going to leave you in here and you can watch the mask disappear and uh, I'll let you know what happened after it's done. I suppose down here is where I'm most useful. Uh, yes. Yep. So while they're doing this, the uh, turnbuckles are knocking out the pins. So they're trying to turn the turnbuckles to release the tension on the stays and they're fighting, which I'm not entirely surprised by. It's the guy said, yeah, your question about re-rigging, there's your answer, which also means I'm not putting the rig back up. Not nervous. No, not at all. Sounds like a hawk. Or a pissed off beaver. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Speaking of beaver, you should have seen the one we had here the other day. I heard about it. I've been watching for it and I've been oh. disappointed. I might as well hand it to you at this point. Okay. Now wait a second. Yep. You need to tap out one of the blocks. Just tap it this way and it out. The other ones are loose. Okay, I'll take care of the wires then. Um, are we free to come up? You are free to come up. You're clear all around. All right, we're free to come up. It's been a long time since she's flown. You got the power up? Uh, slow for the wires because it's going. They're coming out the side of the mast. So when I get towards the wires, I'm going to have to probably feed them one at a time. Uh, can I power up for now so it gets yep. head yes. level? Yep, yep. We can power up at least four feet for now. Keep going. Yep, keep going. Good. Okay. You know what? I think we're going to be fine. I can see there's a gap on the bias where the wires are. The aluminum at the bottom is in great shape. I think I got lucky. Oh, you can tell by this. It's not Are we okay well, down there? We're yep. good. We're good. Okay, coming up. Two feet power. Two feet power up. Okay, slow. Stop. Okay, 
and now we'll just crank up. So we crank up slowly so we get the wires through. Yep. That's a nice, a nice big gap down there. So. Yeah. Yep. I think we're fine. Okay. Three inches. Three inches. And we'll be out. Hole. You are. Oh, yeah. If you want, you can come up here and make. Oh, uh, what do you got? Tape or shrink wrap? Or um, wrap? Uh, duct tape, because that solves okay, everything. That's good enough. Let's just tape them up. That way, they don't. You don't have to worry about them. I guess that's the end of the show for now. I've only got the GoPro going. Um, someone's gonna come over and meet me and help me take the boat over. Colin's gone off to get some pictures. And it occurred to me I should put some water into the boat um, and get the electricity disconnected before they get here. So when they get here, we can just go, which means I need to rush. Whoops, I'm not sure when you fell down. Verify that my batteries are at 100% and then pull the power cord so I'm not much closer to go. 100%. So let's go pull the power cord out and I'll stash that away and we'll be pretty much ready to go. And now we go back to waiting. So the mast is down. Originally we were going to drop the mast and bolt, but by the time we actually got the mast down and not even fully secured it was already 3 p.m so and they were like well do you want to stay for another night because if you do you got to pay now so i said sure we're gonna stay another night so this evening i have to cover up where the i know there's a name for that mass shroud something i don't know i have to clean that up because there's silicone on it and then i'm just going to make a waterproof very temporary cover for the uh for this thing so that if it rains it doesn't come inside before i get started let me show you a few things so um that's the top of the mast that's the bottom of the mast these are the lower spreaders so when i went up the mast i thought i saw a crack on the spreader i don't know if this is coming through i think it might just be a scratch in any case i think the spreader is in good enough shape oh one of the things i was really worried about that annapolis riggers told me i was always calling these the knuckles i don't know if that's the right term for them but that's what i've been calling them he showed me some pictures where these had corroded right to hell he was calling them moon rocks and when he showed me one he had cut off another customer's um landfall 38 it really did look like moon rock mine are in really good shape so i might have gotten very lucky here let me see if i can get to the other side i haven't finished pulling this one off but <sighs> see same thing it looks pretty good looking here as well i don't see any cracks like i think i got pretty lucky with these masts or these mast spreaders all right let's go back down the mast so when i was talking to annapolis riggers another part that they said was a common problem with these are these tangs i think they're called tangs i can't remember exactly but they had tendency to seize the stainless into the aluminum and they're totally free on this. Now, these are the upper spreaders. Same deal. The ends are in really good condition. I think, with the exception of the spreader on the other side, for a reason I'll show you in a minute, I think I kind of won the lottery when it came to the mask. I, I mean, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I'm, I'm shocked at how good it is. At least my totally uneducated eyes. But let me show you the one place where I have a very serious problem. So the main halyard is a wire. And this, you can see how it's carved out. And if you look up in it, woo, almost lost that in the water. That was close. <laughs> you can see, you can actually see inside of this. I kind of doubt this is gonna be salvageable. I'm gonna have to take this to an aluminum person. I don't know if these are relatively standard parts. I can just buy one replacement or whether uh, someone who's good at aluminum welding can patch this up. I'll find out after I get home. Oh, and I've got another vang up here and it's free as well. No problems whatsoever. So this is the bottom of the mast. There's a bit of bubbling right here 
but generally speaking, it feels, yeah, see, there's, this worries me. There's a bit of white powder here, so I'll get, whoever I get to look at my spreaders, I'll ask them to look at this as well. But I suspect I can just sand this back, maybe do a treatment. If anything's gotten too thin, which I really don't think it has, then maybe spot weld it and I don't know, I'm not a metallurgist. So that's the bottom of it. There's all the wiring taped up. Now, one thing that makes me very nervous for the rest of this trip is my boat is now a unicorn. Docking is going to be a whole lot more fun, as you can see. <laughs> you have to be careful when you walk because... Yeah, so the one thing I wanted to look at, and I'll look at that with you before I come back out here and finish this up, is the mast step. Do you want to say hi? Hello. This is Colin. He's the one who saved my ass. So, this is the mast step. So, again, I'm looking at this the same time you do. You can see how much water stands here. I mean, look just how rotted everything is. But, uh, I'm not going to take the screws off tonight, but you take these screws off, this exposed the entire plate. But from what I understand, this either has poor drainage or no drainage, which is why the water sits here and everything rots. Oh, that's actually earth. That is not wood anymore. That is just earth. Okay, so all the blocks are out. I'm going to put you down and start scooping this out. Fair to say these blocks have no life left in them. You know what? I will take this up. I want to get a good look at this. I, literally, it's mud down here. The, stain, the keel bolt still looks perfectly fine. Oh, I could probably plant flowers in this. I think I might have absolutely won the lottery. So when I was at Annapolis Rigger, he showed me one of these that had been completely corroded and it actually snapped when he lifted. Actually, with this keel bolt here, there's no way to get this mass step out without pulling this keel bolt. This keel bolt is something like 300 foot-pounds of torque to tighten it up. I don't have a torque wrench that big. I might have an excuse to buy another tool. Well, anyways, that's not for today's problem. I'm not seeing any signs that the aluminum has corroded or bubbled or whatever you would call it. Like, this is looking totally fine. I... I don't play the lottery, but apparently somehow I won anyway. There we go. There's some of that flaky corrosion there, but the meat of the metal is still here. I mean, the paint's all flaking off and stuff, so this, this mass step has to get pulled and cleaned. Oh, f one of my bets just fell in the bilge. Because of course it did. Okay, I heard it fall in here. Oh, there it is. That's gonna get cleaned. Bilge water, it's what's for breakfast. I'm really curious to see how the audio is gonna be without the other mic that I usually use. I hope this is complete. I hope this is not complete garbage. Like, there's definitely this very start of corrosion, but it, it, uh, yeah. Okay, I gotta go back up top and start cleaning up all the wires because we're leaving at like 7 a.m. in the morning. There's a hole in my boat. I'm gonna be fairly quick here. We're just about ready to go, so I just wanted to give you a very quick update on what we did. So, the lines have been lashed so that we can actually get around the side deck. We got a bunch of new fenders and did my best to lash up everything so that it's not drooping and making it harder than it already is to see. The mask could slide aft or forward if we uh, hit a wave or stop or start suddenly. So I've got um, ratchet straps forward, mid and aft, specifically trying to keep, uh, keep it in place. It's made the cockpit not a great place to move around, but what can you do? All right, we got a jet, so we wanted to leave at 7, and it's already 7.30. So we're underway, and I wanted to show you, because I know looking, it looked like the visibility would absolutely be horrible with everything in the way, but with everything strapped up, it's actually tolerable. So yeah, it is 7.38, so we got out a half an hour late, which, you know, all things considered, I'm not too concerned about. I really hope you can hear me, because again, I don't have the normal lapel mic, but Hopefully it's good. It is a GoPro, so this might be shite. <laughs> it 
And yes, I can see my instruments. That's the uh, six foot depth. I gotta hug the shoal a bit closer. I'm gonna turn you off and navigate. So we're just trying to figure out the locks. Flight of five closes at 16, 6 p.m. We had originally thought we'd be there at 3 p.m. if we left at seven and averaged five knots. We left at 7.30 and at 2,500 RPM, I'm only making 4.7 over ground. <laughs> Six, nine in the water, so we got the currents against us. They say to be there 90 minutes before close, so we have to be there by 4.30 gonna be close. Let's see if we can do it. I'm impressed this little motor can do 6.7 in the water at 2500 RPM. She's not a slow boat. The tide may not be in our favor, but otherwise it's a nice day. While I was getting ready for this trip, I was trying to debate whether I wanted to get an MFD or just run Navionics on the phone. I had several people tell me, oh, just get Navionics on an iPad. So I went to the uh, Apple store and I was trying to decide which one, you know, did I want to get an iPad or an iPhone? I wanted the iPad because it was bigger. You have to get the one with the cellular, but even with cellular, it won't make or receive phone calls. So I thought, man, I'm gonna get the iPhone. It's a smaller screen, but at least I could make phone calls. So Navionics on the iPad might still be fine, but I'll tell you my experience with Navionics on the Apple, not very good. I am pretty quickly leaning towards, yeah, if you're going to do any kind of serious cruising, you kind of need to bite the bullet and get a proper MFD. Anyways, I just had that thought, so I thought I'd turn on the camera. So it was inevitable, it was gonna break down, and we just broke down. Beautiful scenery, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, you know what? There's a boat coming by. Pass me the radio. Let me see if I can hail them. Sailboat uh, coming by Mermaid's Rest just off your port. Do you read? Yeah. Hi, what are the chances you have a spare uh, diesel bulb on your boat? <laughs> oh, I don't have that at all. I ah, figured as much. Well, didn't hurt to ask. Uh, have yourself a good trip. <laughs> okay, thank you. Shit. I got another boat coming in the back, so they could ask them. I really doubt anyone's going to have this. Um, and I don't even know where the next town is. I'm going to see if I can jerry rig something. Thank you. Okay. Take care. All right. Well, that was actually somebody we met at another arena, but. I'm gonna have to rig something up. I'll show you what the problem is if I can. So I started noticing, I went to check the fuel because everyone always said that if you have a problem, it's fuel related. And you see the crack there? Yeah, that's not supposed to happen. And that's more importantly, it's letting air in, which caused me to lose prime and starve the engine, which means once I fix this, I need to reprime the system. Now we're on anchor, but uh, we don't have a lot of scope out. We're really close to the shore, so I'm going to turn the camera off and get back to it. Um, once it's safe, I'll bring you. I'll get you an update. We've got a large power cruiser coming up, and it's it's coming up at speed. Oh, they slowed down. That was not a spare that I kept on Magic Dragon. I don't expect anyone to have a spare, but I figured it doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah. The worst thing you do is say, nope. Yeah, no, fair enough. No, I, I, I'd be somewhat surprised, but 
All right. I don't, I'm sitting here absolutely kicking myself. Of course I should have replaced it. It's rubber like everything else and everything rubber on this thing is perished. All right, name of the game right now is to make it up to, I, I'll, I'll use Albany as a, as a yeah. target, but whatever. Okay. Nurse this up to, to Albany. It's still gushing out. That's the wake I'm assuming. Bit of the, the weight from that uh, big belt that just passed us. Yep. So this will this down but... Well, I was always told that if I'm going to break down, it's going to be a fuel issue. Can't say I wasn't warned. Problem is, is the diesel just eats at the glue on this tape. Okay, so you know, the main thing I need to do is stop it from sucking air. I don't need to really, I mean, I don't, th I can prime it with the push lever. It'll take forever, but I could do it. So if I can just get the engine running and suck the air out of it. Well, for that matter, can you bypass? Can you remove that um, bulb? I can, but then I'm going to lose pressure and I don't really have a way to prime it back up again unless I sit there and plunge it for like hours. So yes, if I have to, I can, but I don't want to open this up and lose my pressure. All right. All right. Let's give this a try. Your, your waterway guide. You, you it's down below. Okay, I'll go grab that. Uh, the I'm going to see if I can get the engine idling. Well, and I want to find out where we could dock at, um, yeah. at or near, um, at or near Albany. Can you look to see if anything's coming out of the bulb? All right, so far she seems okay. All right. It seems, to be, it seems to be holding. I think we're good to try to make it to the next anchorage and then I'll have to buy another bulb. It started and it ran for about a minute, minute and a half, and then just hard stalled. And I put a plastic bag over this and wrapped this in tape to try to create like an airtight seal. And I can't get it started now, so. The only primer I have now is this little lever, which moves very, very, very little fuel. We're drifting. If we put more road out, we're gonna drift further. Yeah. I should have dropped the anchor sooner. I'm sorry. Okay, let's give this another try. You know it doesn't have fuel filter or fuel pumps? Electric motors, yes, I know. I was gonna try to push the primer bulb with my ear closer to the tank, but I think I can do that if I can find where the bulb is. There it is. There is always the possibility I've got two problems, and that bulb was been a problem for a while. feeling I am draining up the starter batteries really fast now. Editing Maddie, I envy you because this is all resolved by you by the time you're reading this again or watching this again. I wrapped it in a plastic bag and covered it in duct tape and that started filling up with diesel. So the new plan, oh I called um, for a tow to see what that would cost. I'm looking at an absolute bare minimum of 1200 US dollars. Um, absolute bare minimum, probably closer to two grand. So obviously that's, yeah, that's not great. So the new plan is, so originally I found I had saved a bunch of these brass fittings. I bought a bunch of them at, at Bacon, you know, stupid as hell not to replace that, but at least I was smart enough to get some barbs. But then I realized I have enough slack on the line. I think I can get this diesel line straight onto the barb for the Raycor filter. So that's currently what I'm trying to do. Yeah, uh, but that's that's what I am slowly stripping this off. But of course, it's covered in diesel now, so getting the tape back off is fun. Yes, that's the F word I'm going to use. Fun. Definitely got air in 
system now. Okay. Can you send your patella from uh, over the galley sink, please? Yeah. And thank you. Just a sec. I think we broke down literally as far away from as we could possibly get from the toe for the rest of the trip. Like right now, we're as far as we can possibly get away. All right. Well, I have a new hobby. <laughs> Developing a hate on uh, diesels. Oh, no, no, that's that's been well established. No, stay here and pressing a plunger for as long as I possibly can. All right, let me know if you need somebody to, if you need me to spell you. When I was doing this the first time, Joe, the mechanic, said, push the lever, lever until you physically cannot do it anymore. Switch arms. Push the lever until you physically cannot do it anymore. Switch arms. Press it again until you can't. Like, do that a few times and you might maybe have got the air out of it. But I did say is uh, when I was doing all of this maintenance, learning how to prime the diesel was one of the things I was glad I learned. And uh, here we are. Yeah, I don't know if you could see that when I did that, but yeah, the bulb was completely gone. I just took it from, this used to go into the bulb, and now it goes straight into the ray core. But when I released this, thinking I could have used that to plunge to suck some diesel out, I started hearing air going in, so I closed it back up really quickly. So the only primer I have right now is that one. I don't think you need to sit here and watch me do that for a long time, so I'm going to turn the camera off. I'll turn it back on when I'm ready to start the engine. I don't think it's going to start yet. It's been a bit, so I'm going to turn over with the starter and see if that helps uh, prime or bleed the air out of it. I know you're not watching this until after this is solved, but if you could go back in time and cross your fingers for me, it'd be appreciated. Come on, baby! Okay. At least it tried to kick over. It, it <laughs> caught a I caught a couple, yeah. I'll uh, leave it for another 15 minutes and keep plunging. I don't know if it's ir irrational, ir irrationally hopeful, but I think we're gonna get this. I mean, I might as well think we're gonna get this because it's not gonna change the outcome whether we do or not and put me in a better mood right now. <laughs> Still no luck. Pressing that lever is starting to kill my arm. So I'm gonna see if I can ring up a cam lobe. I have no idea if this is gonna work. Alright, I have no idea if this is going to work, but the idea is to hit the lever with the lower part. Of course, this is going to be in the way, but whatever. Something will hopefully turn that lever without having to hit with my finger every time. Is this working? It's not actually going all the way down. That is full extension. I know you probably can't see this very well, but I apologize. I kind of need to see it more. Well, it was good while it lasted. I can see the brass piece I was using has deformed. I set a 15 minute timer and I'm uh, going up and trying the starter a couple of times every 15 minutes. All right, so update. Um, not going very well. <laughs> we uh, dragged anchor a bit. It looks very muddy, but thankfully we dragged anchor into shore and now we're sitting on the ground. I'm pretty sure we're sitting on the ground. We've got a tow coming. Um, I kept trying to prime it and I got to the point where I started being worried about um, burning out the starter. So we have a marina we're being towed to. It's about three nautical miles away and uh, they have a chandlery and what they don't have in stock, they have a uh, it's Donovan's Shady Harbor or something like that. The gentleman on the phone was really nice. I asked if they had a, a West Marine in your nearby. He's like, oh, 20 minutes away, but we have a loaner car. Like, holy shit, that's amazing. So as of right now, <clears throat> we're waiting for Sea Tow. Uh, it's been probably half an hour already, but they were two hours out. And then we're gonna have to get dragged off the bottom and towed to the harbor. I know a lot of people go on and on and on about the benefits of the range of diesel. I get that. You don't, you don't deal with air leaks that starve you out when you're supposed to have a full tank of diesel or a full charge of batteries. I, uh, 
I was thinking while I was doing all of this, how people I think are very familiar with the pitfalls of diesel to the point where it's almost just background noise. It's not something they really think of as problems. It's just something they live with. I'm not saying electric is perfect. I'm not gonna say even electric is better, but this idea that, well, if your diesel works and you should just keep it, no. Electrical systems are far, far simpler. There's far less to go, lo go wrong. I don't have to worry about leaks with the coolant system. I don't have to worry about leaks with fuel systems. I don't have to worry about injectors. I don't have to worry about filters. Anyways, yeah, this trip is going fantastic. Just fantastic. Update, I'm still waiting for a tow. I got a message after saying that uh, we'll let you know when your captain's coming. And then I got a message and it was about half an hour ago. During that time, um, not being one to sit idle, I've been trying to figure out what to do to get this thing running. I'm gonna take the tow anyway, but I wanna see if I can bleed it anyway while I'm waiting, because I mean, why not? I got nothing else to do. Well, I could be editing videos, but fun fact, I'm currently editing the video on uh, dewinterizing the boat and the water tanks. <laughs> For t time frame of reference. <laughs> it's weird being so far behind real time. I'm sorry, I'll try to get caught up. Anyway, I was pressing that lever as you saw, and I wasn't getting anywhere, and I happened to mention on the Lady K Discord, and S. Stan, SB I think his nick is, said uh, he was trying to give me some help, and he was like, oh, you have to make sure you crack the bleeding nut on the second filter, which I should have known of because I did that when I was bleeding the system first time. So I cracked that, and as soon as I did, I, I didn't have the camera going, I heard this So clearly, there was air in there. So now it is open right here. Can you see that? And now I'm back to pumping and I'm gonna keep doing this until I see diesel come out of there. Do it once, it's not make you an expert. <laughs> Anyways, there's another update. Still waiting for sea tow. Oh, and we're aground now too. The tide went out and we were dragging anchors because you know, I got all my road out or all my chain out. And, it's just one of those days. <laughs> Not where I wanted to be. Down below? Yeah. It can just go anywhere. So, still broke down, but we're back on dock. They uh, towed us in. So far, these guys are freaking angels. Um, I got here and I'm like, yeah, I hear you guys loan a car. They're like, oh, we think they're both out. And the guy was like, well, you can just take my truck. What? <laughs> so while we were coming in, Colin called the local West Marine. They have the bulb. They're holding it for us. They close soon. So we've got to skedaddle. I really hope the audio is decent on this because today's been adventurous and I'm hoping to share it with y'all. Get something out of all of this. <laughs> I'm going to suffer. At least get it on YouTube. So, the problem I was having was, or this was the only bulb I had access to, and it was 5 16 The diesel line going from the diesel tank to the inlet of the Raycor is quarter inch. They, I brought this down to see if I could put it on the quarter inch. No, wasn't happening. One of the gents here, I was saying, the, the Donovan Shady Marina folks are brilliant. He was suggesting that, well, he came down, he's like, can I come take a look? And I'm like, yeah, sure, of course. So he took a look and he looked at the output hose and he's like, what size is this? And I said, it's 5 16th. And I'm like, oh, he had the idea that I could use it. Excuse me, I could use this, just put it on the output side of the filter. Is that ideal? No, it's not. Cause now you're sucking through the filter instead of pushing through the filter. But I, I'm not really in a position to complain or be picky because I'm in the middle of absolutely nowhere. I'm so far out in nowhere that I don't even have cell phone signal if I'm in the boat. The only way I get signal is by literally going sitting outside. So the fact that I could actually rock up to a place and get my hands on one of these, yeah. I'll say again, I, I knew that everything flexible had was perishing on the boat, but that's why I replaced all the hoses. I don't know why I completely overlooked this. Like it's a flexible rubber hose. I absolutely should have replaced it, but here we are. So. If I can get this on this evening and get the system primed, 
we can get back out at first light and hopefully make it to lock seven, maybe even past lock seven. But I mean, I'm thinking after the engine's running and I don't even have the engines running yet. So let's focus on that first. Sorry for not taking the time to set up lights better. I, I, I'm sure you can understand it's, it's been a lot. It's been a lot, lot. So this is the quarter inch. That's the inlet. The outlet, you can see the different sizes in the hoses. This should be 5 16 So the idea is I'm going to take this off and make sure that that fits where, where did I just put the bulb? I'm going to take this off and see if it fits. If it does, I'm just going to cut this right here. I've got some new hose clamps and stick this in the middle. And you have to pay attention to fuel flow. Is that coming across? Yeah, that comes across fuel flow. So normally I would want it this way, fuel going towards the filter. In this case, because I'm on the outlet, I need the fuel going away from the filter towards the engine. I'll try my best not to get in your way, but yeah, no promises. Oh, that's dry. You know what I think I'm going to do is put the bulb in here and see if I can even suck fuel out of the diesel tank. Ugh. Okay, it will go on, but very tight, but that's fine. That's enough now that I can start. I need a, I need to go get that, the vacuum can. Be right back. Oh, haha. -ha. Of course it's dry. This is on the outlet side. I can't. <laughs> I, I, I was. I'm feeling really stupid today. It's it's stress and nerves and fatigue, I know, but I was like, why can't I suck diesel out? Because it's the engine side. That's not where the gas comes from. The diesel comes from. Okay. I know now that the hose fits, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it, flip it around, put it onto the output part, output of the filter, and I'm gonna try to um, suck it through the filters to make sure that I've got fuel flow through the ray core, because if somehow the ray core is jammed or the pickup tube is jammed or the supply hose is jammed, might as well figure it out tonight because I'm here till morning now, whether I like it or not, <laughs> might as well be thorough. The fact that absolutely no diesel fell out though, uh, kind of makes me a touch on the worried side. How much air is in this thing? These wire cutters have proven to be far more. I just bought these to get a, an order up to hundred bucks so I could get free shipping. And my Lord, these have been useful. So I'm going to cut the hose right here. Wow. That hose is absolutely bone dry. Well, here we are. I didn't get quite a square cut, so I'm going to do another cut and just try to square this up a little bit so that it sits better on the shoulder. Probably being paranoid, but so be it. There, that's a more square cut. Fuel flow is through this way, and I want to be able to suck some through the ray core. So let's get this on first. There! Well, it's tight, that's for sure. One of the ones I bought is missing, uh, it's missing the, uh, screw pit. What the, what the what? I'll put a bigger one on. It's not ideal, but I, I buy extras. I, I didn't know which size was going to be best. I should hopefully still be able to get this to tighten down. That, uh, that's some pretty skookum. if I can get any diesel. Okay, that's not a good sign. This should work without, like, what? Oh, okay. Put my finger over it to create a vacuum to draw the fuel out. Okay, now I'm starting to get diesel. Okay, so I was letting too much uh, air back in. It's not really flowing fast, but okay. It's not as much as I was expecting, but it's not nothing either. Okay, you know, this is gonna be easier if I take it back off here. Oh, yeah! Spilling diesel. Spilling diesel. Well, on the good side, that's positive flow. So I know I'm getting diesel out of the filter. That's not a small thing.
I'm sorry, I, uh, this, I, I'm not trying to exaggerate, I'm just this tired. It's been a very, very intense several weeks. <sighs> okay, it's not all the way on, but, I mean, this much of the barb is on. Oh, come on, if I'm this close, don't give up now. <sighs> all right. Oh, sorry, you must have put that on. It's okay, you've seen me do that before. Hello. So that's on that barb, that's on there, that's on there. Let's go crack the uh, bleeding valve and start squeezing. You're gonna be watching, but right here, the diesel to sneak out. Oh my God, the... When Cito got here, I had opened, or I, just before they got here, I had opened this up and I forgot to close it. That's why I've been sucking air. Oh my god, that worked a lot faster. Okay. I'm getting diesel out now, but I'm hearing hear that there's air up here I think I need to bleed this first but I don't really know how to bleed this first so sailing people being awesome I just got a call from the guy who was the uh, slip beside me that big well Bruce he called me up to ask how I was doing because he saw me post on my personal Facebook that I was stuck and uh, he had the suggestion of try turning the engine over close everything up try turning the engine over and have one person squeeze this while the other engine's turning over and try to just encourage it through. So I'm gonna go close that bleed, bleed valve and then make sure, yeah, this is closed up here. And then I'm gonna to try to turn over the engine at quarter throttle, he said, don't go higher than quarter throttle. And I'm gonna ask Colin to squeeze this while I do that and just try to get some of the air out. I'll probably have to come back and bleed it again. I'd be surprised if it starts on the first try. But I mean, anything that helps get the air out of the system. Okay, ready? Yeah. Oh, I can hear so much air in there. The bulb's on the wrong side. Yeah, there's definitely air at the top of the fil filter. Okay, if I don't solve that problem, I don't start the engine. All right, with the filter on the output side, when I open up the bleed valve and squeeze it, it just sucks air in through the bleed valve. So that's not working. So I just had an idea. I've been sitting here thinking for like 15 minutes. I'm gonna try taking this off the mount and drop it low so that it's below the tank level. And then the diesel pressure should hopefully push it up and push the air out. And I'm running low on ideas, so let's give it a try. Crack that. Okay, the bulb just got a lot harder to squeeze. Okay, why can I not, I can't even squeeze the bulb now. Oh, did this get dirty all of a sudden? No, oh, that's really cloudy now. There's air in the system and I can't get it the fuck out. I can't squeeze the bulb. As soon as I drop it down below, so this is below the diesel tank level, I can't get anything out of this. Okay, that is wide open. I cannot squeeze the bulb anymore. If something plugged the intake and the pressure built up here, I wonder if that's what caused this thing to rupture and so the rupture was a symptom of another problem. I'm taking the inlet fan hose off and seeing if I can just gravity siphon some of it. No, I am not getting anything out of the diesel tank. I suspect the plug pickup tube is clogged, clogged and without the squeeze bulb to draw it out, I don't know what to do. Okay, I was able to blow out, so I might have a blockage in there. Okay, I can hear it going into the uh, diesel tank now. Can I start siphoning it? I really don't want to suck diesel in my mouth.
There it goes. I had a blockage on the uh, intake. Which now scares me because that means it can block again. Yep, come on in. I, I've got a camera going. If that bothers you, I'll turn it off right now. No, okay. I tried uh, blowing on it and I had a really hard time blowing and then I just felt it suddenly gurgle. When, when I blew it out, like I said, I saw that allergy in the line. Yeast allergy, okay. Yeah. That worked out good there it, for you. Yeah, except I can't squeeze it. Try squeezing it. Because you're going against the injectors. So what you have to do is crank it over while it's cranking. You gotta pump, it. You gotta pump oh. it at the same time. Do you want this open or close? Um, what was that, bleeder? Yes, yeah, the bleeder. Close it, close it, because you don't want no air. Because okay. this, this is already primed. Well, it's got air in it now, I know for sure, but... Right? Yes, because you would, right. you would, if the primer's here, you open this... And you squeeze it, and it forces it in and it, yes. the air out. But now, because I'm sucking, I'm just sucking air when that... When you, open. yes, when you do this, now you're sucking air through here. Exactly. Forcing it into the injectors. Crank it on pump. Okay. Okay, ready? Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Instead of pumping it, I was keeping continuous pressure on the prime ball. Yeah. And I wasn't losing any pressure from it. So there is no sign that any more air is being sucked in. No. All right, we're going to get this. A flat handle here too. If you... Yeah, that's fine. This will do it. Oh, okay. So that's going yep. to be easy. Okay. So we're primed here. We're definitely primed here. Go ahead. Tighten that up. Yeah, it's tightened. Okay, look at this now. Oh, we're going to get it. Where's that lever at? All right, I want you to crank. Wait 30 seconds. Wait 30? Yep. Hold up. I'm starting to finally get a little bit of pressure. All right, give me another like 10 seconds. Another 10 seconds? Uh, okay. All right, give me another 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Just let you know the starter and the wires are fine down here. There's no heat at all in them. Okay. I'm more worried about the batteries because they're so close to dying. Give me ten seconds. Ten seconds. I think it's time to crack the injectors. Turn it over and blow yeah, the diesel I'm, up. I'm fucking baffled. As soon as I see fuel, close it. Got yeah. it. Nothing. Wow, really? Stop. I'm not getting any fuel to the rail. So I gotta start figuring out. I bet you there's a glob of shit in there somewhere. Is there a glob of shit or a pump shit the bed? Okay, if the uh, pump shit the bed, I'm in a lot deeper shit than I realized. Yep. So it looks like we might have lost the fuel pump. We were pulling lines off and priming to see where the diesel was going and there was nothing going into the injector rail. I thought I had to bleed the injector rail, but there was just nothing there when I took it off and we squeezed it. Absolutely nothing. So that's where we're thinking the problem is. This here mounted to the side of the engine. This is the lever that I was pressing. There's a diaphragm between these two pieces. And if this diaphragm is torn, that's it, we're done. If that diaphragm is not torn and there's just debris in there that's jamming it to prevent it from lifting. So as the engine rotates, he said that doesn't sound right. I've never heard it before, so I can't assume. I can't guess, but it, I, I trust what he's saying. Anyway, so as the engine's rotating, it's hitting this, and that's what's creating the, the thunk, 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 pumping to suck the diesel in and push it out the other side. So we're going to take this cap off and see if the manifold inside is torn. If it's not done and there's just shit in there blocking it up, then, which I really doubt, but I would be so happy if that was the case, then we can try put on cleaning it out and putting it back together and maybe get this going tonight. And he was saying when I need to take it apart, I need to be very, very careful not to, you know, if, in the hopes that there's some debris in here that we can clean up. Point is, try to put it back, so take it apart very carefully. Thank you. What's this? Gas concealer. Oh, sweet as. It's gonna be tight. There you go. Nice. Did you hear go? Okay, that one's broken. <sighs> Got nice, it. Nice, nice. Use that to scrape out the uh, screw head. Oh, I, even better. I fix it? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yes. Ay, nice. Got it. <laughs> By the way, did you want to introduce yourself to the video? I am, I'm no one. <laughs> no one who's very helpful. 
I'm here, but I'm not here. I'm gonna open this up. I want you to see. Might have to run a razor blade around here. Well, that's fine because I have a spudger. No, I might be able to get it. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Got a little bit more. Now, the important thing is when this comes off of here, it has to go back on the same exact way. So I don't see a tear in there unless it's torn around here. So the plunger's facing that way. Yeah. This came off here. I'm going okay. here. So the nipple is. The nipple is on the outside. Away from me. Help if I put my fingernails on the center and no, pull it. No. This is a slow. The intake side was above, right? Yeah. Because this is the plunger side. This is what does all the pumping. Yeah. So it'd pull down to suck it in and yep. push up to and, drive it out. Yep. And I was expecting to see a bunch of shit there. Oh, so you do see shit on the underside. You can see the spring. And that's working. So it's not torn. From what we can see with the naked eye, all it takes is a hairline crack. I'll start drying it up and see if we can see anything. Bless you. That was the water part. Does this lever pull out maybe no. to release it? No. Actually, I see springs everywhere. Yes, because you have the top cam, the lower cam. Yeah. But see this black shit coming out of here? Yeah. Well, that looks like just oil. Yeah. I've got a little bit of diesel in a, in a like a no. mustard bottle. I can no. try squeezing into there if that would flush it in. I'm not seeing anything right pronounced. So this might be fine. But then why were we not getting diesel? Well, you were pun pun er, pumping it. Could the channels through here be blocked? Lobe out. Could like, because there's a filter here I can see. If we take these two screws see off. See how this. Yeah. When I do, when I do this. Yeah. We, we we could not feel that before. Here, you, you try it. You couldn't feel that before, right? No, I don't think I could. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's. I'm getting nothing. That's where the dockage is. <coughs> yeah, diesel's disgusting. I've tasted it a few times. Or, or I have diesel instead of gas. <laughs> That's true. Oh, something just popped out of there though, and like debris. Or debris, a plug? debris. Because if that's on the motor, okay, that was. That's the the load that's, is the output. That's, that's that way. That's in. That's that way. That's inlet, outlet, and I just blew something out of this one, out of that one, going towards. The so there was injectors. some shit in there. So I just blew. The I just blew something, because you heard it. Like, pfft, yeah. Pfft. Now it's free. I'm curious about this one here though. Because that's the output, so it won't it shouldn't allow it to go backwards, right? It should be blocking you. <coughs> now if you blow this way, it should allow it out that I can way. Suck, I can suck through this way, but I can't blow. Well that makes sense, because it's the output side. It should be a one-way valve. Yep. Yeah. So that's working. Yeah. But the inlet. The inlet was definitely plugged. <coughs> So what I'm wondering is if there was definitely something in there because when, when I hit it, it went. Um, what I'm wondering now is, paper should, towel, please. yeah, should I change the Raycor filter? I've got spare filters. Not yet. And my drink is right up there. <laughs> Flush the flavor. Uh, yep. What are you drinking? Jack and ginger. Jack and ginger. Nice. One more clean rag, please. Yep. The woodworking teacher always does that. He just spits on whatever tool he needs, and I'm, he's like, "Just spit on it." I'm like, "I can't bring myself." To well, do the that. saliva helps grab the fiber. Yeah. Oh, he was like, yeah, when you're sharpening chisels and stuff, he's like, yeah, spit, spit works far better than water. And I'm like, yeah. I just can't bring myself to spit on your tools. It's, it. it's actually cleaner. I, I know, I know, I know. It's just a mental else? thing I can't do. All right, we're going for it. Okay, put it back together and see what happens. But if we actually flip it over, we can see which one's the, the check valve. That's the, mm -hmm. the check valve. Yep. So that's the output. So when you set up this morning, Colin, did you think we'd be sitting here doing major engine surgery? <laughs> no. Did you think that you would meet a tree climber from East Bumble Screw? <laughs> Is that, that cannot be a real name. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what uh, the torque setting is. One or two Unga Dungas. Still making the same sound. Why? But that is a lot more promising. Well, here, let me put my finger on the input. Do it again. I'm feeling suction. Okay. Here, do you want me to do it and you feel, see what you think on the suction? Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's better than nothing. It's, it's definitely pulling. These are the fuel screws. So I don't know if you can see that very well. You see how the fuel goes in, and then there's the holes. You drill right through it, and it meets up with that, and it turns this into a kind of weird hose. 
Mm -hmm. Time to put her back in? Almost. Now, do you have a clear picture of this before it goes back in, if this is still the problem? Oh, uh, I'll take some. Now, before we get way ahead of ourselves, how do these rings look? Any little bit of like dirt or crap on here? Brush them off? Well, fuck you. Because sorry. it's gonna be- I'm sorry about the French, but- <sighs> that, the palace. that takes up space? Yeah. But these rings, both sides of them. Have to be scraped clean. Yep. It needs to be a completely flat surface, right? Because- Flat, yes. Are these like but crush washers, so they create a- They are type? crush washers, the same thing as putting a caliper on a, on a front of your, your car and your brakes. The most important thing is nothing on here. Anything that lets air in is gonna fuck yes. us. Here, you wanna inspect that one? Beautiful. Oh, they're different sizes. I have a thin and a thick, and I don't know which um, one goes where. We saw one together, we did. Um, thin on the outside, thick on the inside. Th what is that, thick on the outside? Or thin on the outside, thick on the Thin on the outside, thick on the inside. Okay. So. The thicker oh, one. Oh, so to, to th set this here so that it's inside yeah, of that ring. The thicker ring. one goes against the pump. Okay. So should I scrape this? Because I don't want to. No, -uh, you don't want to scrape, scrape. No, yeah. just just polish, just polish it. Yeah. I started thinking about that. Yeah, just polish. All right, the gas is good, still in place. Shrunt. It doesn't look torn. No. Okay. Let me know what you think of that one. You don't see any scratches or anything? Nope. Oh, only one of them is fat. The other three are thin. Then we're going to a fuel rail side fat. Okay. Actually, it's feet side. So fuel rail side is original. We're going to put this on the feed rail side. I have no idea one from Tether, so I'm going to yeah. trust your judgment. This is all knowledge. Originally, I was like, I don't want to have to learn about diesels, but... Now that I've decided well, I'm going to have a small generator the thing is, diesel engine, so... Even a gas motor. Even a gas motor has a fuel pump, but it is three times that size. Yeah. Now, do these have a... Um, actually, no. These don't matter. They're identical? Yep. Okay, the outer flange, I don't care about. It's just the ring, the landing ring that I care about. Is that tarnish or damage on that side right there? So that's not going to affect the seating? This is going to go through the line. Yep. And then that's going to go... And this will close it. So I got to put this on the on the fuel uh, hose. On the and fuel then close hose. It and then thread And it then in. that's going to have to go on and then onto the pump. Okay, but we're going to do this after this is physically mounted to the side of the engine. Yes. <laughs> Harsh lighting. Uh, yeah, so we'll bring you back when we're done. Because it's not enough space in there for a camera as well. That's the pump back on. That's the inlet side. The diaphragm goes up and down, it sucks it through here, and then when it comes up, it pushes it out here. So now I should be able to take that hose off the uh, injector rail and see shit coming out of it, right? Yeah, so when I blew this out and that, that piece went There through, was definitely some shit that popped out, There was yes. a blockage and we're talking about a sixteenth uh, of an inch hole. Yep. But still, why don't I go up into the lazarette and pull that off and at least you can prime it until we see it coming out the top and we know that that much of the hose is bled. Okay. Before doing that, go ahead and hit the key. Okay. Just to, for shits and giggles? Give it a good 20. A good 20? Yeah. Okay. Crack the injector hose? Yeah. So the problem earlier was this is the fuel rail and these are the injectors. We cracked this and turned it over and nothing came out here. And it's still dry as a bone. Nothing? I don't feel any air or nothing. Cause I mean, what, what's between here and that pump? Oh, this is the fuel return line. Ah, no wonder there's nothing coming out of there. Which means I was also trying to bleed the last injector. That's the return line. So this is, this is my fuel intake. Oh, so these three go to a manifold back here. Is there a rubber, rubber line there? I don't know. Those are going. All right. These are these are your injector lines. Yes. One, two, three. So this what is your, that? This is your fuel feed line. All right. I want you to hit that key. Okay. How long? Four seconds. Four. Nice. You saw it? Yep. It's got beautiful pressure. So do you want me to crack the injector? Yep. I got a ton of air out. You got a ton of air out? Yep. Butte. 
So he's got pressure up to the secondary filter, so now we're going to crack the injectors to try to bleed them. Ready, tell you, lefty, Lucy. I got a crank while you're doing that. Got it. Oh, and I'm seeing a little bit of diesel seepage. So I gotta get it ready to tighten back up. Keep it tight. Keep it tight? Yeah, because you don't want to let the air out. We're lose it back. Okay, so I'm ready to loosen it. As soon as I loosen it, I guess you, you'll tell me what to do. Loose! Nothing! You're tightening it? Tightening it. Alright, go for the one the very far front of the motor. Very far front of the motor. Ready? Get the next one up to your uh, right. So the middle one? Yep. Cracked. Closing. Closing. Ready? Ready? Yep. Close. The middle one. Middle one. Cracked. Close. Ready? Cracked. Close. Those fuel reels are last resource. So here's a question then. I thought that, so there's this thing right here. I don't know if you can see this. Okay. Do you see this here? Yeah. I thought I saw him fucking with this when he was turning it over to bleed it. Go ahead and hop up and crank it over. Okay, we've been running the starter a lot. I think we need to let it rest. Yeah, let it rest. Good. We're back to cracking injectors. I got a lot of air out of that. Oh, you did? Did you get diesel? Yes, lots of diesel. So the pump's pumping. Ah, that's a good sign. Okay, now the pump's bled, the secondary's bled, the line coming around to the injector housing is bled. So now we're back to trying the injectors themselves? So now it's just the injectors themselves. That was a lot of air. That was a lot of air. Don't crack them until I crank. Yep. That's the important part. When you crank, I'll crack, so and as crank, soon as crank, you crack. If I see diesel, I close it. Otherwise, I wait for you to say close it, and I close it. Mm -hmm. Ready? Crack. Dude. You got it. <laughs> Go for the middle one. Okay, go. Um. Okay, don't don't freak out, Maddie. Don't freak out. Okay. Yeah, it's tight. Okay, I'm gonna do the next one. Ready? Uh, yes. Closed it. I see diesel. Um, I didn't see it coming out, but I see it on the head, which right, yeah, it's tight. okay. I'm about to do the number three. Yep. Ready? Yep. Hour. <laughs> okay, uh, you can't see me. I don't care. Um, uh, I'll be back in a minute. Well, that's very harsh shadows. shadows. Nope, that doesn't work either. Fine, set up like a grown up. So, the best we can figure is that there was a series of unfortunate events. The guess, and that's all this is at this point, is the guess, is that somehow a blockage got into the fuel pump. The guess is that it blocked the output side, which is the side he blew that suddenly shot free. If that was the case, then as the pump kept pumping, it would have started building pressure on the input side. With the squeeze bulb being tired and close to letting go, it let go and cracked. And then after that, it started letting air in. The one thing where I'm not entirely sure about this is that if the blockage, uh, the blockage must not have been complete because after it stalled, we got the engine running again, and it ran for like a minute, and I was saying to Colin, okay, let's just let it run for five minutes before we lift the anchor and try to leave, and it stalled out completely, and it did not start again. I think that it was, it was letting air through, so the line that was past the blockage, past the pump, it basically ran through the engine and burned it all up and left nothing but air behind. We started cracking the injector bleed valves. I don't know if that's what they're supposed to be, but you back them off and you blow air out and we weren't getting anywhere. So we were close to giving up because that poor dude had to wake up at 5 a.m. And as I record this, it's midnight and it, he, we finished at like 11. Uh, there's good people out there. Um, 
it, right now especially, it can feel like it's a really dark time and there's still some really good people out there. Anyways, without getting too uh, philosophical, sentimental, whatever, he was like, let me try one more thing. And he was able to crack, I didn't quite have the right wrenches, so I'll put a clip in where he was like, you know, the lesson here is to get the right tools. This gen who helped save my ass just gave me a good piece of life advice. Have the right tools. I need a spanner set. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! But he was able to get one of the sockets on and break. There's like an injector manifold. So after it comes out of the second filter, it goes into this manifold that breaks out into three lines that go to the three cylinders. He was able to crack that open. He had me turn it over and apparently it started gushing air and then diesel. There's still a risk on the rest of the trip home that whatever caused the blockage in the first place could come back. I am certain there's debris in the gas tank and the diesel tank. So I'm not exactly like, all right, we're good for the rest of the trip. I'm hoping we're good for the rest of the trip. Okay, so with that, the original plan had been, um, <laughs> like when I started this video, that this was going to be the whole trip home. I think this is just going to be like day one after the mast is down. Actually, no, uh, it'll include the mast on stepping and then this breaking down. I have to assume this is going to be a long video after how much has happened in the last couple of days. So I'm going to end this one here. And this might sound weird, but I'm really hoping that the next video is the entire trip home because that means it was relatively uneventful and boring and just a lot of pretty scenery. We'll see. Uh, I'm so tired. I'm the Digital Mermaid. Thank you for watching. There's good people out there. The world can make it feel like it's just absolutely full of shit right now. I know that I often think like, ah, oh, I just gotta get this boat down and get the fuck out of here before society collapses. I mean, kind of sarcastic, but not entirely sarcastic. And then days like this happen where a complete stranger spends hours like getting covered in grease, covered in, in old diesel and they don't stop until you're you're back into a good place again. And I mean, I tried to offer him like, can I can I can I buy you something? Can I pay you something? And he wasn't taking any of it. There's good people out there. It's important not to forget that. All right, I'm exhausted. I'm going to sleep. You guys are the good people too. Like I, I can't tell you how many amazing supportive messages I've had. It's anyways. I, I'm. In my fatigue, I am getting sentimental. Good night. See you in the morning.